channel thank you guys for tuning into another video like you guys are some real ones first of all let me start out my video by saying that i've gained over like 200 subscribers within the past month and that is so amazing i'm so happy for my team i don't even know like what to call you guys yet like i feel like that's so unprepared on my part i should have a name for you guys but maybe the next video i'll have like a name for you guys but Today, I'm going to be getting ready for class while I tell you guys about my experience at Spelman overall. Initially, I was going to do a week vlog, and I think I'm still going to do that, but my 10 a.m. got canceled this morning. And honestly, God told me, let me just sit down and just tell you guys, what's up? What's tea? Like, I wish that I had the video that I'm about to make before I came to Spelman um, so that it would, would have, like, impacted my decision or whatever. So, I want to do that for you guys while I get ready. And plus, I'm trying to uphold this whole, like, looking good to class, like, um, looking polished, looking well-kept, not looking like I just rolled out the bed and ran to class. I'm trying to uphold that because it's going to be my senior year next year or within a couple months. And it's like, I'm not going to carry on the same habits that I had freshman year to senior year so we're trying to revamp and reiterate our routines before we get into this video please like comment share and subscribe send this to your friend who wants to go to spellman send this to your sister who wants to go to spellman shit send this to your sister or your friends that want to go to hbcus in general because a lot of the things that i'm about to say apply to hbcus in general not just spellman and yeah let's get straight into the video okay so i know my hair looks a little bit crazy because i just be putting it in rollers to get it on my face to be honest but let's start out. Okay, so I think I should start out by like starting by my uh, freshman year and like to now and like how I started out seeing Spellman and like how I like, you know, found out about Spellman and everything. So if you guys don't know, I'm originally West African. My parents are from Cote d'Ivoire, which is a small country in West Africa between Liberia and Ghana. Um, so my parents never went to school in the United States, making me first generation. Um, they are educated, so education was always promoted in my household, but I wouldn't say that HBCU education was as promoted. I actually didn't find out about HBCUs in general until like my junior year of high school when my friends were talking about how they wanted to go to HBCUs. And to be honest, I was kind of lost. Like, not that I was lost, but I had a lot of schools on my list that weren't HBCUs, so NYU, U Miami. Um, what other schools did I have? I had Columbia, NYU, Miami, some school in South, um, in Southern California. Like, to be honest, I'm not going to lie, I was one of those free lunch kids, so they gave me those waivers where I could apply to any school for free. And if you're in high school, please talk to your counselor so you could find that type of waiver. It really helped me. Like, I literally applied to every school that I could, like, probably over 30 schools, um, just for fun, just to see if I could get in, to be honest. So I applied to Spelman, and honestly, I didn't apply to Spelman because I had like a hmm what's the word like oh my god Spellman like it was never that it was that I'm the only child and my parents wanted me to stay in state and back then I was so used to like the entourage that I was always around from like fifth grade to like senior year and I was thinking that a lot of the people in my high school would go to my state school I'm from Georgia so I'm thinking they're going to go to Georgia State, Kennesaw, you know, those schools. And I'm like, bro, like I worked my ass off all high school. And I'm not I'm not saying that any of those schools are lower or like, um, you know, they're not as good as Spelman. No, but I just felt like the effort that I put into my curriculum or my education should have been recognized by what type of school I went to. And a lot of those schools, their acceptance rates were so high that honestly if I had went through high school getting all C's I would have still got in and that's not the challenge that I wanted for myself I think it was more fun for me to like apply to schools where you know like it was just more competitive that's just what it was um and Spelman was one of those schools so my application process when it came to Spelman child I don't have a mirror so I'm gonna use a small mirror just for y'all's sake because I was gonna use my MacBook but I would be looking down and I don't want to keep looking down so okay so the application process so like i said i was applying to a lot of schools like i wasn't really specifically worried about spellman but i knew it was a competitive school and i wanted to get in so i applied and i think i applied like early action or some shit. and i was getting into the schools and then in the 
December of 2020, 2020. In December of 2020, Spellman sent me a letter and they actually told me that I was deferred. Now, if you don't know what deferment means, it means that like you didn't get in, but you also weren't rejected. They kind of just like pushed your application to another cycle, whether it's regular cycle, cause you know, there's like early decision, early action. And I think they pushed mine to regular decision. And in the moment, it kind of like broke my heart. I was like, oh my God, like I didn't get in, but that's fine. Like in my mind, you know, that's it. Like even if they didn't reject me, like that's it. Like I'm not going to that school. So at this point, I was like convincing my parents, like, please let me go to U Miami because I had gotten into U Miami. Like, please. And they were like, no, like you're too young. We don't want you to go out of state. Blah, blah, blah. So at this point, like, I'm just frantic. Like, I don't know what to do. I don't know where I'm going to go. Like, graduation's coming around. Blah, blah, blah. And in April of 2021, I ended up getting into Spelman. <laughs> if you are of a, another ethnicity and not originally American, a lot goes into going into an HBCU. Um, and there's a lot of negative things that come with it, unfortunately. Um, I was blessed to like have parents that are not ignorant. My parents have always taught me about African-American history. My dad is a very, like he's a historian. He loves reading about Martin Luther King, Martin X, like, you know, like so from a young age, I've always known about stuff like that. But for my parents, like at first when I got in, they were like, oh, like, that school and I was like yeah like that's cool and I think they kind of like frowned upon it because you know it was all girls or whatever and I don't know what they had going on in their head but I'm strictly diggly so I don't know what's going on fast forward I got into Spelman I'm secured like I wasn't really thinking about like I wasn't really thinking about what would occur at Spelman when I got there I was just you know like I got into school like and you know it's not a school that everybody and their mama is going to so I'm content so fast forward August 2021, because I'm class of 2021, graduated from high school. Um, class of 2021 moves in on campus. And I started to realize that a lot of people know each other. Like a, a lot of people knew each other. And I don't know if it's like prior to like before they came to Spelman or what, but I started to realize that like the summer that everybody got accepted into Spelman or whatever, there were group chats that were being made. And in these group chats, people were already forming like friend groups and like um, friendships like with people and stuff, like whether it was like their roommates or just random people who already went to Spelman. And then I started learning about like the different kind of organizations that people were in prior to Spelman to get into Spelman. It was a lot, like it was very overwhelming, especially being that first gen presence um, where your parents are always forcing you to go to school. My parents have forced college my whole life and that I didn't like understand the stigmas of college and what comes with college until I had to apply. Like I'm talking FAFSA, I'm talking financial aid, all that. My parents didn't know anything about it. It was all on me. So I feel like I was really frustrated with everything coming to college. And then when I got here, I was faced with a whole different wave of like sadness and emotions because everybody was already in like, like cliques and groups and stuff. And I didn't have no friends and that's just what it was. Um, and if you know me in real life, or if you guys know me, I feel like I'm a really social person. If you've been on my YouTube, you see me like vlogging with random people. I have no problem talking to people. But at that, at that time, like, you know, I'm, I was still very young. Like I was still coming into college. It was still a new scene. So I was like, I was nervous. I can't lie. So I spent my first semester like really like reclusive and really like going home a lot because I wasn't really initially like, um, comfortable I wasn't I wasn't comfortable at all um and I really only had one friend shout out to her her name is Rachel and she was my freshman year I didn't have a roommate but she was living next to me and she had a roommate her and my friend Devin and they were roommates and you know those are my only friends but so I was really reclusive I didn't like the school and then I had told myself like I'm gonna transfer because I don't like it. I don't know nobody here. Like the school is mad expensive. Like it was just a lot of things going into my decision and I really did not want to be here. But let me tell you, like she doesn't go to Spelman if she hasn't wanted to transfer at least once. Every girl that I've met from Spelman has at least wanted to transfer at least once from Spelman. So let me go into my spring semester freshman year and that is when everybody starts to get more like warmed up to like the atmosphere I believe and I started making more friends I can't lie um you know it was great like 
I started making more friends. I started getting more into the routine of being on campus. I started learning more about like what Spelman, like what it constitutes of, like the sisterhood and everything. And at that point I was like, oh, I've never felt the sisterhood like ever. Like, you know, like I just started making friends. And even with some of the friends I was making, I feel like at the time, because I was very young, I was accepting a lot of things in friendships because just for the sake of having friends but looking back like that wasn't real friendship but you know like that didn't occur to me until later but that's another you know story time um but i will say that yeah like i started getting more comfortable and stuff and i started learning more about like hbcu culture and what it constitutes of like the history behind it and stuff and it started making me really excited as to like you know, being a Spelman student, like, duh, like, I go to Spelman, like, what's up? So, that's how I left off my freshman year, like, when I left for home for the summer or whatever, I was like, I love Spelman, like, I, mm, uh, let me not say I love Spelman, but I, I was getting more warmed up, like, I didn't want to transfer anymore, I was willing to give it another chance, and my sophomore year, my sec, I mean, my freshman year, my second semester, Spelman ended up having a housing crisis, and in that housing crisis, they told us that, um, some of us weren't gonna live on campus anymore because they didn't have any dorms on campus for us to stay. They told us that we're gonna stay off campus. I'm like, I'm lit. Like, first of all, young me, I'm lit. Like, I don't wanna be on campus no more. You know how campus comes with all the restrictions. You can't have AC, you can't have fridges, you can't do this, you can't do that. So I'm lit, like you about to take me off campus. So they took us off campus and they put us on Georgia State campus. And that's when I started to realize the stigma that is out there for Spelman girls is just so like, it's so classist um, that sometimes you might get like mixed up in the environment and think that like there's only one demographic that goes to school, but it really takes for you to like meet other people and learn their stories and just be in a different environment to learn about people. And I think that's what it took for me to love Spelman even more. I will say that me living off off campus made me love Spelman 10 times more like I'm not lying because when we were put um let's call this place the jungle because that's what it fucking was like I don't know why they put us there but when we were at the jungle I started to meet a lot of people like who were first generation with like me who were having the same problems at Spelman like me whether it came to like us making friends financial problems because Spelman is expensive um just affording living in the city just all that it just made me feel like so more in touch with reality and more in touch with my school because I feel like the stigma around my school is just like oh like the girls are all rich like you know like da 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 and I feel like that's what I felt when I first got here and I was like I really cannot relate with anybody here because my parents come from a different space my parents work for hard for what they have and i'm not saying nobody else's parents don't work hard for what they have but i've wa i've watched my parents build up the wealth that they have or whatever they have and i'm not even like trying to make it seem like oh like i'm poor no but it's just like some of our financial situations are not in the same place and i feel like sometimes when people look at spelman they, they think that everybody is like that when it's not like that and I think I got consumed in that idea first year, and that's why I felt like I couldn't fit in. But once I moved to the jungle and met all these other girls that go to Spelman who share the same things, like same problems, same real life situations as me, it made me feel more at home. And that's crazy because it's I was off campus, you know? So I started making more friends, and that's when I really felt like the sisterhood came in for me. And like freshman year, like when they would teach us all the things that like Spelman girls are supposed to like abide by and like all that a lot of girls would like you know tune in and be like oh like the sisterhood isn't real like you know it's just a thing that they use to promote the school and stuff and honestly I started to believe that but once I met those girls from the jungle I was like no like the sisterhood is real like I definitely see these girls being in my life you know post-grad like in my like this is nothing like me being in college right now like it's a pity to you to even think that this is my peak because the way where I'm gonna go in life is crazy and I would see these girls who I'm with right now in my future you know and I felt like I never felt like that freshman year even with the friends that I made freshman year so it was really exciting um I will say though that like a lot of things go into like making friends making 
acquaintances just making people that were going to be around you in college in general and I don't want to say that I struggled with that or I struggled with that but I did encounter a lot of people from the school who just show you that people were raised different like it's nothing negative to say about anybody a lot of things happened to me during my matriculation in Spelman with different people but I never take it as hurt and I never take it as like oh like when I see them it's like beef no it's just more so a lot of people were raised different in different places of the world um, a lot of people go by different standards and what standards you go by might not be the standards that another person go by and that's just the reality of it and that's why a lot of friendships don't work out um, and like I said like before college you really cannot get consumed into like the whole I just want to have a lot of friends for the looks and stuff. It might be like cool when you see people on social media and big friend groups in college and stuff and you're like, damn, like I don't have any friends. Like, oh my God, like how are they making friends and stuff? A lot of those friend groups be fake. A lot of those friend groups just be for social media. It's better to have one or two solid ass friends that you know have your back than like randoms. You know what I mean? And that's just what I'm applying to my life right now. But I also feel like with college, you have to be, you have to learn to like being alone for some time because at the end of the day, you're being removed from like your home, like your your natural like way of living, your friends and stuff. And you're being put into this environment with totally different people and stuff. It's going to be a period where you're not going to have friends for a minute and that's fine. But that period, don't let it be a period of time when you're like, yearning for friends you need to let that period be a period of time where you're discovering who you are as a person and discovering what kind of friends you want to attract you feel me like some people are okay with attracting people who are bad people just for the sake of having friends and i keep saying that and it's just like it's not worth it like it's just really not worth it but yeah okay so anyway so my sophomore year, I want to I want to say is the best year that I've had in college so far. I can't lie. And I say that because one, I lived off campus. So yeah, we was way more lit than what we would have ever been on campus. Um, because Spelman campus is located like on a in a lower, I don't want to say lower class, but it's it's located in kind of like a more low key place in Atlanta. It's not in the city city. So whatever goes on here is thrown by like Clark, Morehouse, Spelman, and if nothing is going on, nothing is going on, it's dead silent. But when they put us in the jungle or whatever, we were in the middle of the city because we were on Georgia State campus. So it's always something going on. It's always something going on over there. So although our peace was disturbed, it was still kind of fun because you were put in this environment where it's like the natural college setting. And it was cool and stuff, but I, I I don't think I would live there again, but it was cool because I got to experience like, you know, college experience or whatever. Um, and I got to experience actually being a semi-adult because when you're not living on campus, you have to provide for yourself. You have to provide, you know, yourself with food. There's no meal plan. Um, I, I will say that the solitude is way better because you get your own bathroom, your own room and stuff, but the responsibilities are more. Um, but I mean, I didn't have a problem with that. But as far as like Spelman in general, I will say that I wish that they put us somewhere safer. Um, like, I'm glad that they put us somewhere, period. But I'm, I wish that they put us somewhere safer only because, you know, there was a lot of things going on around there. And if you're from Atlanta, you know where I'm talking about that racetrack. Yeah. Yeah. Like, I just felt like it was just... You know, I don't want to refrain from saying it, but I just feel like the school has way too much money to put us somewhere like that. But hey, that's just me. So currently, it's my junior year. And... I am just reflecting like this is exactly why I'm making this video I'm reflecting because I feel like each year taught me something different at Spelman um, and the theme for this year is really just application um, being removed from like campus and the HBCU environment last semester while I was studying abroad just made me realize everything that we take for granted going to an HBCU one and to everything that is within arm's reach for us after we graduate you know what I mean like um, First of all, I feel like I take being in a space where I'm watching black girls excel in general, whether it's STEM, law, art, anything, like this is the black girl mecca. Like we are pushed to strive for like excellence. And I take it for granted because 
when you are put into the real world and in real situations, there's a lot of schools that won't do the same, especially for black women. And I'm grateful for the opportunity to be here because I, I won't lie, they do give us a lot of opportunities and a lot of things that I have done uh, career-wise for my future career, because I want to go into law, if you didn't know. Um, a lot of things that are like uh, corporate excursions or corporate, um, what are those called? What are those called? Like they're like like events that like they fly HBCU students out from state to state to go to like these panels and stuff. And it, it looks good on your resume, like you're young doing that. And Spelman puts that, you know, like within arm's reach for us. And I'm a, I'm appreciative for that. And also something that motivates me as well is when I go to like these summits and stuff and I meet like girls who used to go to Spelman who are now in like the you know the career that i want to be in and i'm seeing them not only making hella money but being very like they're thriving they, they never miss giving gratitude to spellman and to god of course but to spellman because of the opportunities that they give black women malcolm x says that the black woman is the most disrespected woman in america and it is true going abroad made me realize that like black women really don't get a lot of recognition for the things that they do so the fact that this school is putting us into in the position to even like be successful in the world in general and make a mark on the world, like a, literally a choice to change the world. And I don't take it for granted anymore. I really don't because I just feel like I'm just really excited to see the people that are around me right now accomplish and flourish so much. Like it's like the, the future is so bright and it just makes me so excited. But yeah, like I would say that you really have to take your college experience for what it is and make it what you want to make it because it's like it's not always going to be good that's another thing like i'm going to spellman but i have friends that go to ncat i have friends that go to towson i have friends that go to like other schools like georgia state their experiences are different and there's always going to be you know the grass is always going to be greener on the other side there's always going to be problems but you got to you gotta make the most of it. Like, I feel like the biggest problem for me at Spelman is how expensive it is, to be honest, and that's like me being transparent, but I literally am holding faith that my debt is gonna be cleared. Like, that's something that I have in my heart that I'm holding on to. I know my debt is gonna be cleared. Like, it's just something telling me my debt is gonna be cleared, so I don't even be worrying about it these days. Like, when I first got here, I was like, oh my God, like, how am I gonna afford this school and stuff? But through my matriculation, I'm starting to realize, like, there's a reason why I'm here, you know? like I. I deserve to be here. I worked hard to be here. And there's a reason why God put me here. So God would never put a, a problem in my face for him not to have a solution to it. So all I have to do is trust him. And that's just what I do. You might call me crazy. You might call me delusional for doing that. But that's just what I'm, that's just how I'm living. That is just how I'm living. I will say that like my, if I had any advice to anybody going anywhere, it doesn't even have to be Spelman. If you are a vocal person about any opinions that you have that would either affect you or affect anybody else or, you know, just affect anybody in general, never back down. Never dim your light or never, like, feel like you don't, you can't say anything because you are not of a certain caliber or, like, you already don't deserve to be there, so why would you even say anything about, like, how it's instituted? No. You deserve to be wherever you need to be in life. You deserve to be there because you worked hard to be there. there. Nothing happens randomly, basically, is what I'm trying to say. Nothing happens randomly. You need to speak up. And I feel like that's another problem, not a problem, but that's something that I faced when I first came to Spelman. Um, I'm referring back to like that housing situation that I was talking about my freshman year. I definitely said a couple things on Twitter about it. Like, I definitely said a couple things about how the institution should be ran and like where this money should be going because of housing and why a f students who are lower classmen are forced to move off campus because really realistically a freshman year and sophomore year you're supposed to stay on campus and upper classmen are staying off campus but we were forced to stay off campus sophomore year and that's not normal you know what i mean so at the time i definitely said something about it and when i said something about it i'm not gonna lie i was shunned and i'm gonna be transparent i love my spelling girlies i love my girlies but they was coming at me sideways on twitter and i feel like it has to do with like maybe at the time we were all we, we weren't all mature um and i'm not gonna sit here and say i was right i was right you know what i mean but at the at the time we wasn't all mature and when i posted that some people weren't going through that same reality you know what i mean like some people probably could have afforded to be off campus like that and a lot of us couldn't 
relate to that, you know, like to that reality or whatever. And a lot of girls that I met at Spelman would share the same reality as me, but would be scared to say something because of what I just said, because they don't feel like they are worthy enough or like, but baby, I'm gonna say it. And I did. And you know, they was trying to cyber bully me, not cyber bully, they was trying to like, you know, like come at me sideways on Twitter and stuff. And it really sparked up a lot of altercations, but I'm not gonna lie, I stand by what I said. I will never back down from what I said. And if it was me advocating for me and a lot of other people, I'm glad that I got the point across. And even if it was taken negatively by anybody else, like I'm glad that you guys are still being made aware of the situation, no matter how you take it. You know what I mean? So like I said, like never back down because you deserve to be where you at. So if you have an opinion, voice it, voice it, voice your opinion, because you don't know, like you by you saying that, it could change the trajectory of like literally i'm not saying that what i said was so influential for spellman to like do something but when i said what i said spellman ended up having a protest i remember march 24th 2022 because it was my birthday they had a protest and the day after they ended up housing us at the jungle and honestly at that time we didn't know like how bad the jungle was or whatever but it was still something you know what i mean like they owe us at least that if we're paying you feel me so voice your opinion make sure that you are heard make sure that people take you respect you make sure that people respect you as much as you respect yourself and that's something that i have to apply to my life now and that i'm learning and constantly learning like i want to be a respected woman but all the accolades that i'm like accumulating through my matriculation at spellman through my matriculation postgrad you know when i go to law school if i get my master's all of that i'm doing this because I want to be a respected woman in this world. I want to make a change in this world. And I want people to respect me when I make a change. But how would I want to do that if I can't even respect myself? You know what I mean? How do you want to make a choice in this world if you can't even voice your opinion in this small community? You feel me? Like, speak up. Speak up, speak up, speak up. I feel like that's a big problem we have in the Black community as well. Speak up. Like, speak up for what you stand for. Speak up for change. Speak up for anything. Speak up for anything. It doesn't matter. Even if you feel like bullshit, the next person won't think that it, that it is bullshit. You feel me? So I'm going to backtrack a little bit. Um, I'm going to go back to like the whole first gen stigma at an HBCU. Um, this might not apply to everybody because, you know, not everybody is from a different ethnicity or whatever, but I just felt like my parents were accepting of like me coming to Spelman because of, you know, like the accolades behind it. A lot of like the alumni that went here, Bernice King went here and my parents literally named me after Bernice King. My TV, my channel name is literally Joyce Bernice TV. Bernice is my middle name. My parents named me after Bernice King. So when I was a Spelman, my parents started like, you know, like, oh, it's destiny. Blah, blah, blah. Maybe it is, you know, God is funny like that. But I just feel like coming from a different culture, Black people are very divisionist, um, and I am constantly faced with like the stigma between African Americans and Africans and Caribbean people. It's just so much, and I my major here is international studies, and I have a concentration in international development. But I also take anthropology courses, and if you don't know, anthropology is like the study of culture. So I love learning about history and culture and stuff. And I really just wish Black people would just realize that Black is a race, and it's okay to be like a different ethnicity. It's okay to be African. It's okay to be African American or black american it's okay to be black american it's okay to be african it's okay to be caribbean and it's okay for us to all um coexist because we have different cultures and that's fine but a lot of people have a like struggle with like that concept i guess so when i came to spellman i was faced with a lot of like uh kids who share the same identity as me ethnicity as me or whatever with their them going to like uh like I wouldn't say famous P PWIs but known PWIs and their parents like comparing them to me when it comes to my parents and like not knowing what Spelman is and I find myself explaining what Spelman is to a lot of people always it doesn't take anything but some research but yeah like whenever I have to explain well, well in the past whenever I had to explain spell what Spelman was to like African aunties or whatever it would like make like discourage me in a way because I'm like bro like it's not even them trying to like learn what Spelman is. It was more so like them trying to be like, oh, like what is that school? Like, you know, like she, you know what I mean? And then if you were to actually do the research, you would know like what comes with the school or whatever. But I'm gonna tell you, do not let that shit get to you. You pick the school where you wanna go because of you. It doesn't matter what your parents think. It doesn't matter what your auntie think, your cousin think, your brother, your dog, it doesn't matter. And that's something that I had to learn as well. Like. 
I was trying to go to a good school so everyone could be like, Joyce is going to a good school, like she's doing good and stuff. No, like now it has turned into me going to a good school because I want to fucking go to a good school. Like that's what it is. Like I deserve to be here. I worked hard to get here. Those aunties that are making fun of the school that you went to or don't know or diminishing your accolades or anybody, anybody who's diminishing your accolades, they didn't work as hard as you did to get where you needed to be. So why should you let their opinion matter? Like, and that's just what it is. So, but like, as I've gotten older and met more people or like, more people have seen like my matriculation and like what I've been doing or whatever because I don't even feel like I'm doing anything too crazy you know for people to like talk about me but it's come to that apparently and I just feel like my work shows for whatever they think like you know like your work ethic speaks for you you don't have to say oh Spelman is a good school like you know, I go here, their acceptance rate. You can say whatever in the world, they still won't believe you, but baby, your work will show for you. You walk out summa cum laude from Spelman College, going to the top law schools or whatever, what they gonna say then? What are they gonna say now? They can't say anything else because your work speaks for you. You know what I mean? You doing like, I study abroad. And to be honest, it's something that I wanted to do since I was 15, since my Spanish teacher told me that she studied abroad. And when I completed it, I came back home like, like, you know, like, it was nothing because it's over now. Like, I did what I needed to do. It's over. But you should see how people are congratulating me left and right. And I'm not saying, I'm trying to be humble. I'm not I'm not saying not to say I'm better than anybody else. But like I said, your work speaks for yourself. Even with content, like, with YouTube and everything. I've been doing YouTube since my freshman year of college. And no, I'm not where I think I thought I would be now. But, like, I'm still improving. And my work speaks for me. Whether it's editing, whether it's me being consistent, people still respect me as a YouTuber now. I'm not going to lie. Like, when people um, meet me for the first time, the first thing they bring up is my YouTube. And that's just what it is. Like, and sometimes I'll be taken aback. Like, oh, like, you watch my shit? Yes! Your work speaks for you. You can't let other people dictate your ideas of how you feel or how you represent yourself. You have to put yourself at the center of everything. Like, I don't care if it's like self-centered or whatever. Sometimes you gotta be self-centered. And I feel like I spent most of my life not being self-centered and catering to other people's needs, whether it's my parents, blah, blah, blah. But once I started being self-centered, I just started blossoming and that's just what I, sorry. That's my advice to you. Just be self-centered, y'all. Why am I doing a full face right now? I'm trying to talk to you guys about Spellman, but makeup is just so fun, like. But yeah, y'all be you be you that's the best advice that i can tell you be you nobody else is going to be better at being you than you that role is already taken by you so play it like what the hell i don't understand the whole stigma behind being somebody completely different when you come to college like you think that you're going to uphold that personality so well for the next four years or did you think that you were just going to transform and automatically like turn into this person it's crazy so yeah y'all college is really what you make it that's it like that's it don't overthink it don't be like oh my god like i'm so scared don't 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 to be honest i wasn't really scared when i came to college anyways i was just like i need to get away from my parents like that's it but yeah don't be scared like it is what you make it and as far as spelling goes like it's a decision it's definitely a decision please look at all the factors before you come here that is something i did not do watch youtube videos watch this video 10 times just kidding but watch videos watch videos shout out to like all the content creators that go to spelman like literally there's so many videos that you can educate yourself on um look up articles read people don't read these days read read about tuition read about the cost of tuition look into financial aid all of that before you make your decision to come here because i wish i did that because if i had did that i'm not gonna lie i probably would have went to another school but maybe it was god's plan for me to come here so that's a different story for me but when it comes to you please do your research that's it like it, that's it you will make friends you will have an experience the same experience that i experienced you probably will experience anywhere anywhere else i have friends that go to school across the country that experience the same things that i will college is college but when it comes to the college you go to please make sure you go for you and what you want to do like yeah i literally uh wanted to be an african-american history major before i came to spelman and when i got here i realized that they don't do that here like they don't have a african-american history major the closest thing they have is adw and i don't want to take adw 
had I known that before, I probably wouldn't have came. But hey, like I said, there's a the grass is always greener on the other side. Like uh, the experience that I would have had being taught uh, African diaspora at Spelman, I probably wouldn't have gotten at Georgia State. You feel me? Like it just all what you make it is all what you make it, baby. Okay, guys, so that is a wrap on my video. I hope you guys learned so much from the video. Even if you didn't learn anything, like, I hope that something stuck with you as far as, like, college advice, just anything going on in college, whether you're coming to college or in college, about to graduate. I just hope something that I said in this video resonated with you. really want to make another video like this um, because I don't feel like I expressed everything that I would want to. Like I said, I'm still learning. I'm still through my journey. But this junior year diary series is really just me giving back to you guys and you know trying to look more into like my shoes when I was like a younger age like maybe if I had seen these type of videos it would have helped me more so that's what I'm trying to do um but yeah guys I will see you guys in the next video I really hope that you enjoyed this video like I said like comment share and subscribe I'm not gonna stop saying that and I love you guys very much in the next